every time you you chant the name even if the mind wanders it doesn't matter and that is why so many of us gather together when so many of us gather together and sing the name he is there the name is nothing but the presence and the one presence the one which has become the many and so every time you sing the name be sure that you are living in god and what an easy way of living in god in meditation we have to struggle and struggle and even then you are not sure you are meditating so you, you, for all appearances we sit why don't you sit in a chair yes give him a chair in my madini please make yourself comfortable because otherwise if there is pain here and there we will be concentrating on the pain we will be meditating on the pain so yogi ram sarit kumar always said make yourself comfortable so that you don't think about the body so here you can be very sure once Uh, somebody came and asked you in answer to me swami while i chant the name my mind is wandering isn't that mechanical then doesn't it become mechanical because the mouth is chanting the name but the mind is jumping from one branch to the other like a monkey the mind is wandering the pat came the reply from yogi ram sarma he said at least your tongue is not wandering when you sing the name <laughs> so it starts with the tongue and if you keep on chanting 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 not a single nama goes waste every nama releases the divine energy the pure divine energy inside you and the shakti of this nama will cleanse you is capable of taking you to god it cleanses you your anger your jealousy your desire your attachment to the world and to the people all that you slowly 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 pale into insignificance and finally disappear you will be completely cleansed when we chanted the name for one it's it was a bath what do they call it baptism baptism they baptize you the holy bath it's a holy bath for the mind the mind will be cleansed you may not know it you know there is the physical body there is also a subtle body the subtle body gets cleansed you will be surprised the the energy that went around the waves and waves of energy that came and spread around such is the energy and especially when all of us sit together and sing in unison is a tremendous energy released and it's a holy bath do you think so we take a dip in the name the holy divine pure energy and so we stand cleansed of the impurities of the mind so this nama chanting is very important because you live in whenever you chant the name you live in god you don't bother about the mind because after some practice the mind will settle down on the name the only thing is you have to remember i am chanting the name of the god the one god be it rama krishna shiva buddha jesus is the one god i am chanting the name of god rama 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 i am chanting the name of god yogi ram sarit kumar yogi ram for that matter any nama you chant you must remember it refers to the one god and that one god's energy purity ananda are all in that name in fact it's even a uh, little above uh, the person because 
the, the, the minute you imagine an image, you step, you step down or you come down on step. Because the name has no form. It's formless. So it's a higher step. So seeing the person and worshipping, seeing the deity and worshipping is one thing, but chanting the name wherever you are, you are concentrating on the subtle energy of the deity, which is a higher step. So, okay, so we go on chanting, chanting, chanting. In the beginning, you chant with the lips and loudly. And after you keep on chanting, 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 there comes a time you just want to sit down and chant. The chanting continues, but it will continue from the tip of the tongue. You could see it when you chant mentally, the tip of the tongue would be moving up and down, up and down. So the Nama, the center of the Nama has shifted from the lips to the tip of the tongue. Now the power of the name increases. The energy released by the name increases several fold when you chant the name mentally. And then you keep on chanting, 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 chanting. Then after some time, the energy center would shift to the throat. You could see, you could feel the Nama coming from the throat, from the vocal cord. Now there, the Nama, the same Nama, is several fold more powerful than the Nama from the tip of the tongue, which is several times more powerful than the Nama that comes from the lips. So the center has shifted. Now by then, you will begin to have lots of experiences of different worlds. You will be surprised. And then again you continue. You don't stop with that. You, you, what happens when the center shifts? You know, your Nama chanting intensifies more and more. So from the center, it shifts to the heart center. So when the Nama shifts to the heart, there's an explosion of love. It is where you feel that universal love, a costless love. You don't care what a person is, how he is, what religion, what country, whether he is black or brown or white no differences at all, you feel the same love, same compassion towards the entire creation. However disgusting the creature is, however beautiful a person is, it makes no difference. You feel a burst of love, an explosion of love from the heart. And you begin to see God as an embodiment of love. The love, the true love of God with which he has created is animating and with the same love he would destroy us. <laughs> so that you continue, you intensify further. Now again, when the center shifts to the heart, the name, same Nama assumes several magnitudes, several orders of magnitude of power. It's they say, from the tip is a thousand times more powerful than from the lips and from the throat it is thousand times more powerful than from the tip. So you can imagine the energy that develops. And finally the Nama shifts to the navel. You can see the very breath starts from there. Even as you breathe and you take a deep breath. You could see it coming from there. For that matter, any any song, any bhajan or any nama chanting, when you deep breathe and sing, sorry, when you breathe deeply and you sing, uh, you know, it comes from the words. So it comes from there, from uh, the navel, from the depths. And then, that is when you begin to see the whole world as God. 
everything, everything is gone. You cannot see the world, the world disappears. And you would wonder, where was it? I saw so many people, so many creatures, so much of everything. And now I can't see a thing. There is no world, there is only God. The pure awareness, the pure silence. There is only the pure consciousness, all the contents of the consciousness, meaning the thoughts. What is the content of consciousness? The thoughts and images, the experiences with the world. All that will disappear. With that, the world will also disappear and you land in the kingdom of God. That is the kingdom of God. And there you see only you don't see, you feel pure awareness. The awareness which is only aware of itself. There will be nothing else to be aware of. So you see that it's a whole process. Every nama that you chant matters. And every nama releases the pure divine energy which will take you to your final destination. It's one step further. But while you're doing that, you have to know that you are living in God. I'm chanting the name of God, the ultimate God. It's not just uh, the turban and the, uh, the, the shawl of Yogi Ram Saratman, or the Shiva with his trident, or Shirama with his bow and arrow. It is the ultimate God, the pure awareness, the pure consciousness emptied of all its content, meaning it's a thoughtless, throbbing, pulsating presence, the huge, huge, tremendous presence, the one presence, the one existence. So never underestimate the value of name. In fact, there was an incident, you know, Jay Krishnamurti was one of the greatest saints of India. Jiddu Krishnamurti. Jiddu Krishnamurti. And in his talks, he was loudly saying, what is the use of name? The Nama only makes you dull. And what is the use of gurus? You have to find it inside. You have to find your silence inside. The silence has to flow. So he began to decry, you know. He began to, uh, it's not underestimation, he knew what he was talking about. So he, uh, when Papa Ramdas was saying, Nama is everything. Nama will take you to God. And Yogi Ram Sarutma was saying, Nama is the ultimate God. And you hear Jiddu Krishnamurti was saying so loudly and so clearly, forget about the gurus, the traditions, the nama chanting, they will all make you dull. You'll become even worse than you have ever been. Now, when Yogi Ram Kumar asked him, how can it be? He said, Yogi Ji, Whatever I am talking is only for the non-believers. With a smile, he said, whatever I talked is only for the non-believer. Because for the non-believer, there is no guru, there is no faith in him. The non-believer has to investigate, has to go into the inquiry of the self, and of course, if it comes to him easily, it's nice because for self-inquiry, we need two things, concentration and purity. Many, many people have concentration, but they lack the purity. You need both. And so, the Nama chanting has its own value in the scheme of things. and. Uh, one should never underestimate that. So that is why Yogi Ram Sarathama said, 
you must have your practice, spiritual practices must be integrated. What do I mean by that? When you feel like it, when the mind becomes sattvic, you know, all through the day, 24 hours of the day, sometimes the mind is sattvic, and sometimes it's rajasic, and sometimes it's tamasic. You know what it means? Sattvic is the mind turns towards God spontaneously. You feel very quiet. You just want to be on your own, sit somewhere, close your eyes and go into the silence. Fine. Do that. And then suddenly, you know, you feel, oh, you have to get up. And you go, okay, how long can you do it? The way we are. So after some time, you know, you feel like getting up and then doing that. Suddenly you feel the flow of rajas, the flow of activity. And then you engage yourself. Then how do you contact with God? You think that whatever you do is only His self. The whole cosmos belongs to Him. So whatever work is involved in the whole cosmos is His. So whatever work I do is only His work. I just have to do it with the awareness I am doing His self. You take money, you work in a company, you take a lot of money for that, it doesn't matter. At that apart, you must think that the company, the boss of the company is not your boss, it is he. Because the company and the boss both belong to him. You yourself belong to him. He created you. So we ourselves belong to him. So whatever we do naturally belongs to him. You don't have to speak loudly about it, but you have to be aware of it. So whatever you do, be aware that you are doing only His seva, or better still, He is doing it through you, because you are only an instrument. What do we mean by that? An instrument. Can your brain think and do all that you do without your life breath? And you did not put the life breath there, it was already there, and who put it? It's come from inside. So who is inside you? The one Divine. The one God who has put the same breath in all the... You take an ant, it is breathing. This uh, stone breathes. Do you know that? The metals breathe. You know, they, you, there are experiments now with the metals and how the metals react. So someone is going to give a hammering to that, the metal also trembles. The metals react to human beings. The uh, plants and trees, they react. The, the stone has life. Everything, everything has life. And who gave that life? Who put that life breath in you? It's He. What have you done? Nothing. Where are you in the whole scheme of things? We don't exist. Except in our ego, except in our imagination, except in Maya. So what really exists only is the one divine which has put the breath in you and because of the breath only you can see, you can hear, your brain works and you do everything in the world. So we are mere instruments, puppets, like this fan, like the light there. I mean, if the fan is there, there's no current, what to use? And if the light is there, there's no current. So we, we are like that. We are like the fan with the light. Like. But the current gives light to that, and the current makes this fan move. So the light breath is put by God. So we ourselves don't exist. It is He who has put the breath there, He has given life to us, so He is the master. He is the owner of this body. This body is only a puppet. Somebody has to pull the string so that the puppet will talk and move its hair like, like I am doing now. The puppet, somebody has to do it, pull the strings. So it is the divine with the new, and he, the divine has two strings. You know your breath. It goes up and down, up and down. So he pulls the puppeteer. The divine is pulling the strings of your life breath. Then you see, you talk, you do all kinds of nonsense. You know, they think of this IS, IS, or what is it? The people who are cling. It's 
Soden Flisley, all those uh, the terrorist groups. We do all that. Why? How could they do it? Only even because of the light breath. Who put it there? It's God. God is within them also. It is God. You know, in Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna says, "I am Arjuna. I am the good Pandavas. I am also the bad Kauravas. I am Duryodhana. I am Arjuna. I am Dharmaputra. I am Yudhishthira. I am the Pandavas." I am the power of us. I created this war. I have already enacted this, and I have already killed all these people. So Arjuna, you have to do it physically. That's all. You are only an instrument in my hand, and through you, I will do the physical act of killing. I have already killed them mentally, which means we just have to take this, and they will just fall, like the cards. This is what Krishna says. I have already done it. Even our life is a finished movie. Every moment, whatever is happening, is meant to happen to us, and that's why it's happening. And whatever is happening to us is necessary for our spiritual growth. Be it good or bad, be it positive or negative, it is happening because. It is meant to happen, and why is it meant to happen? Because it will give us a push towards God. So whatever happens is necessary, and whatever happens is grace, because it gives you a push towards God. You may not be aware that it has given you a push. You will be, you will come to be aware much later. Even in the most negative happenings of one's life, there is grace. The grace will see to it that you are being pushed towards God. You may not be aware while it's happening, but it happens all day. Everything is grace. This is what Yogi Ram Sarathmar taught me. And what is the sure sign of your progress spiritually? You will begin to see only grace in everything. You will see only God's design in everything. You will be able to see His. Invisible hand behind all happenings of the world. That you will not blame anybody for any happening. If the terrorists are there doing all kinds of atrocities, it is he. I should not be saying all this, but it's he. It is by his design it's happening. So everything, everything is He, and as you progress spiritually, as the center of your thinking, as the center of your nama chanting, as the center of meditation, shifts from one level to a higher level. You will begin to see only grace, grace, grace in everything. In the beginning, it's grace. In the middle, it's grace. In the end, it is grace. So when you begin to say it's only grace, 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 you have progressed far. But if you say, "Oh, this person is so bad; he has got this habit, that habit," or oh, that person is nice, you are still there in the first grade. <laughs> the more and more you see the differences, the less and less spiritual you are. The more and more selfish you become, the less and less spiritual. So when I say you progress spiritually, what does it mean? You become less and less selfish. You cease to be the center of your life, the center of your thoughts. So these are all sure signposts that you are moving the right path. That you begin to see, you begin to blame less. You begin to, you stop finding fault with people. If you find more and more fault with people, you can be very sure. You are coming down. You are rolling down the mountain. So we have to remember this. That in a few minutes, we will we'll have to go there, and the temple will close. So let me tell you that 
every time you chant the name be sure you are living in god every time you do seva to people or to god unselfishly without any expectation without anything expecting anything in return you are living in god every time you feel like finding fault with somebody then you say no 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 it's he you are living in god we are already living in god but we are not aware of it so this awareness is very important this awareness is spiritual practice the true spiritual practice is being aware that whatever you say whatever you think whatever you do is only because of him and in him and for him so like you say from god to god by god for god and god alone exists my father alone exists there is nothing else no so he rams it and he rams it as well